Check out FlipSideGaming.com for all your gaming needs. Use the promo code HEROES to save 10% on all orders over $10. Additionally, from December 12, 2019 through January 27, 2020, if you use this promo code, you will automatically be entered into a drawing to win a Theros Beyond Death Draft Booster Box. Also, there is another way to enter where no purchase is necessary. See the link in the description below for full details. Hey there, this is John from Heroes and Legends. Welcome to another edition of the Magic the Gathering Market Watch, and I hope everyone's having a great holiday week. This being holiday week, actually, I think has sparked the market a little bit. It has been very sluggish, but this week you're going to see there's a lot of cards going up in value again, a lot of things stabilizing. Just a quick reminder, though, before we get into all the details, if you go over to FlipSideGaming.com, you can use that Heroes promo code, save yourself 10% on orders over $10. And right now, if you use that promo code, there's a chance that you could win a draft booster box of Theros Beyond Death. All the details are in the description below. But without any further ado, let's get into it. We're going to begin, as we always do, with standard. And the top seven standard legal cards found in draft booster packs that have lost value this week. So you're going to see later in the video, there's a lot of life in the market, like I mentioned. But standard is still very sluggish. We're in that awkward time period. Everybody's waiting for Theros Beyond Death to come out. No one wants to spend a lot of money on a card that they may or may not be playing next season. Number seven is Voracious Hydra. This goes down 30 cents to 428. This card currently isn't doing a whole lot in standard, but it is seeing some pioneer play. Now, before a lot of the bannings, it was seeing more pioneer play, which is part of the reason the card is soft right now, but it still shows up in Mono Green Devotion decks and Hardened Scales. Number six is Vivian Arcbow Ranger, down 34 cents to 1599. So, this is seeing a little standard play in adventure builds, but I don't really know how much that matters right now as people are planning for the future. But the main reason this is going down currently is because of the green bannings that occurred, not only in standard, but also in Pioneer not too long ago. Because of that, this card is seeing a little bit less play. Now, much like the previous card, it can still show up in green devotion builds, hard and scale, so it's still kicking around Pioneer, just not in the numbers it was a few weeks ago. I am a little surprised, though, to see the card going down in value like this, just simply because it's already a powerful card, and it has three green in the casting cost. With a devotion element coming to standard with Theros, you would think people would be a little higher on this card. We'll have to see what it does next week. Number five, Priest of Forgotten Gods, down 43 cents to $2. One thing I noticed in the last GP Top 8, no Racto Sacrifice decks in there. No Jund either, as a matter of fact. So that could be one reason this is going down, but I think the main reason is it's just not seeing a whole lot of Pioneer play right now. Sometimes it will show up in a Mono Black Sacrifice deck, but I do think it's going to have to have more success there to gain any significant value, or it has to have a very good standard season next season. Number four is Steam Vents from Guild Pack, down 54 cents to 22.49. Now, this is the original copy, and I like to look at these original versions of cards that get reprinted in standard whenever possible, just because there's less of them in the marketplace which means if there's something that's going to influence the price of the card, it's going to hit these first and it's going to hit these more dramatically, but still you can see indications of what could be happening to reprinted copies in the future. So what's happening specifically with Steam Vents? It had a good standard season. It actually had a good week in Pioneer too because the Is It Phoenix deck was looking pretty strong. Now whenever a deck looks too strong, people get a little nervous. Maybe a banning will hit it, and maybe that's why this is a little soft perhaps. But between Standard and Pioneer Play, you would think this card would at least be stable. Well, I think there's a little bit of overall softness in many of the Shocklands this week. Not all, but a lot of them, especially the older ones. Because as Theros comes into the Standard format, a lot of folks are thinking, maybe we won't see as many Shocklands played next season. Some people might even start giving up their copies as we move closer to rotation. If Theros does bring a lot of monocolored decks to the format, then these might even lose more value. Number three is Hollowed Fountain, another original shock land. This one from Dissension. It goes down 80 cents to 27.33. Kind of the same story here. Doing well in Standard, continues to do well in Pioneer, Modern, but it is going down in value this week. Number two, third verse, same as the first. Watery Grave, Gate Crash goes down 75 cents to 12.82. Guilds of Ravnica down 82 cents to 10.99. Number one is Knights of the Ebon Legion. It goes down 87 cents to 6.16. Knight's builds are doing a lot better over the last couple weeks. Also, this sometimes shows up in Golgari Adventures and other places too. In Pioneer, it's even seen play in Mono Black Aggro and Vampire builds. But again, with everything about to change in Standard, this card softens up because it is a little more pricey compared to many. Okay, let's move on to the top nine Standard legal cards not found in draft booster packs that have lost value this week. In this section, you're going to see a variety of things. 
you'll be seeing a lot of the cards that were in the Brawl decks that are going down in value now because there's more Brawl decks getting out there into people's hands finally. You're also going to see some of those Core Set 2020 Welcome Deck cards finally starting to go down in value, although they're still too expensive. Don't buy them. And you might even see a Buy a Box promo in here. So let's get started. Number nine is Chittering Witch, down 31 cents to 120. Good commander card for rat builds. You found this one in the Savage Hunter Brawl deck. This can also show up in Collector Boosters too. And again, as these decks are showing back up in stores, some of these cards are going down in value. Number eight is Kenrith the Return King. Now this is the one you'd find in Collector Boosters as opposed to the actual Buy a Box promo, but it goes down 32 cents to 7.99. And it makes sense. I mean, Fire's decks have been doing fine in Standard recently. However, with Theros coming, there's going to be more of a focus on mono colors, and this isn't a very good card for a mono color build. Now, aside from that, though, remember, this is a great commander card. It's been very popular there, so maybe wait for the price to come down a little bit, and you might be able to get a good deal on it. Number seven, Corvold Faker's King, down 36 cents to 1937. So again, this is the non-foil copy you would find in Collector Boosters, but with more of the foils getting out there in the Brawl decks, this one is softening up a little bit. Also, the Jun Sacrifice deck has been very good recently in Standard, but we are coming to the end of Standard, and this is an expensive card. You don't want to buy into this at this point. And like I said, there were no Jun Sacrifice decks in the last GP Top 8, which maybe could scare some people off too. Now, the reason the card still has such a high price point, though, is Commander. This is a very good Commander card. A lot of people have been trying to build around it. Number 6 is Siege Mastodon from the Core Set 2020 White Welcome deck. You can find one copy there. It goes down $0.37 cents to $2. If you want to pick any of these up because they are kind of unique, then I would still wait. $2 is still way too expensive to spend on this. Or shop around a little bit. Try to get them locally, maybe. Online, there's just not a lot of people selling them because the Welcome decks are a product that are meant to give out to new players for free at game stores to get them involved in the game. You don't have a lot of people breaking them up to sell individually. Number five is Bristling Boar. You can find one of these in the Core Set 2020 Green Welcome deck. It goes down 37 cents to 213. This also got reprinted in Mystery Boosters, though, if you are looking for a unique copy of the card. Number four is Phantom Warrior from the blue Core Set 2020 Welcome deck. One copy there. It goes down 38 cents to 218. But this is the only place where you can get this card with that particular art. So if you want that art, you might have to pay a little more. But I want to pay 218 still. Number three is Shimmer Dragon. It goes down 42 cents to 2.94. You'll find this in the Fairy Schemes Brawl deck. Can also show up in Collector Boosters as well. But this has been a pretty popular Commander card for Artifact Heavy decks or Dragon decks. Because of that, it did inflate a little bit price wise. But again, with more of these decks now getting out there to the public, it is going down. Number two is Frilled Sandwalla from the Corset 2020 Green Welcome deck. One copy there. It goes down 46 cents to 118. Number one is Arcane Signet. Technically, standard legal, but probably won't see a lot of play there. You can find this in the Brawl decks as well as the Collector Boosters. It goes down $121 to $7. This is a fantastic Commander card. Commander players have been scrambling to get copies of this for their decks. And the price got actually pretty high, especially when it was hard to find those Brawl decks. But now that they're getting out there, the price is softening up a little bit. Okay, on to the top six standard legal cards that have gained value this week. Coming in at number six is a Shockland. It's Overgrown Tomb. This is the one from Guilds of Ravnica. It goes up 47 cents to 11.62. Not a huge increase, but this card has been very successful recently in Standard and Gen Sacrifice, Golgari Adventures, and other decks there. Also a big pioneer and modern mana based card. Number five, Soren Imperious Bloodlord goes up 68 cents to 12.76. So this card softened up a little bit after the rotation occurred in Standard because it lost a lot of its vampire friends. However, this is doing pretty good in Pioneer right now in Vampire Builds, and is starting to climb again because of that. Number four is Cavalier of Thorns. It goes up 83 cents to 4.95. So currently, this is seeing a little standard play in Simic Ramp and other decks there, but I don't think it's about what it's doing currently, but what it could be doing in the future. Three on color in the casting cost. Theros will like that. Also, it's going to help populate the graveyard, the escape mechanic, and Theros Beyond Death's going to like that. So ultimately, this is a card that stands to get better next season. Also, in Pioneer, it's doing pretty good in Mono Green Ramp, and also maybe that deck will get some tools from Theros too. Number three is the Great Henge. It goes up $1.28 to $15.63. Another card that has done good in Standard recently, but I do think it could potentially do better in the future. Decent green devotion card. It has two green in the casting cost. It gives you two green mana when you tap it. That's nice too. And it has been doing great in Pioneer and some of those mono green decks. Also a good commander and brawl card. As a matter of fact, I got a mention on the Command Zone podcast this week. 
Number two, Leyline of the Void from Guild Pact. It goes up $1.55 to $22.68. This card has been free falling forever now. Finally rebounds and is going up quite a bit this week. So what's happening? It didn't see a lot of standard play. Maybe until recently started showing up in sideboards to deal with Culture and Familiar. However, now that Theros is coming, this stands to become a better standard card. What it does for you is give you two black on the battlefield, sometimes right away, which is pretty good for mono black devotion. Also, this could keep the escape mechanic in check if it gets too powerful. And all the same goes for Pioneer. If any of these Theros cards start to creep into Pioneer, this card could see more play there too. And it already sees a lot of modern legacy and vintage play out of sideboards, as you know. And it's an okay commander card. It actually got a command zone mention this week too. Number one is Embercleave of $1.63 to $11.63. This card had some good times in standard and some bad times in standard. Wasn't doing great during the Yoko time period, but before that and after that, yeah, you know what? It's been performing very well. No reason to think it's not going to perform well next season. And usually when you go into a new season, aggro is the deck to beat, at least early on. So some people might be banking on the fact that this could be a better card in a few weeks. Also, it does have two red in the casting cost. You don't want to ignore that. Now, beyond standard, you have Pioneer, where this is seeing a little more play all the time, as mono red decks have been doing better and better. And also, you'll find this in Gruel Aggro there, too. And yes, it's got a Command Zone podcast mentioned this week, too, which could bring more attention to the card. Let's move on to the top eight Pioneer legal cards that have lost value this week. Coming in at number eight is Collected Company. It goes down 52 cents to 1738. Not a huge drop, and it is seeing play in Pioneer in both Gruel Aggro, Band Spirits, and some other decks, too. But it is seeing less modern play, though, as a lot of the decks that used to run this are moving towards Finale of Devastation. Number seven is Thing in the Ice. It goes down 58 cents to 1547. This card spiked back when Pioneer was announced as a format, but it hasn't done a whole lot in the format recently. Still does fine in modern, though, and is a control and is a tempo build. Number six is Collective Brutality, down 62 cents to 1564. Another card that did spike when the Pioneer format was announced, and it has been seeing play in like Grixis Control but maybe not seeing as much play as many people thought it was going to see early on. Another reason this is soft right now is because it did get reprinted in Mystery Boosters as well. That's probably the main reason it's losing this value. And remember, in Modern, this is still a huge card, even see some legacy play. Number 5, Urborg Tomb of Yawgmoth from Planar Chaos. It goes down 64 cents to 1954. This one's a little weird to me. It isn't going down all that much, but I am surprised it's going down now. It has been climbing in value over the last few months. First, it got hot because of Carrick, Son of Yawgmoth and Commander. Then it got hot because of Pioneer. And it's been doing good in Pioneer, part of the reason I'm surprised. You'll find this in Mono Black Aggro decks, Mono Black Vampires, Zombies builds. And with Theros coming, I mean, Zombies builds might get enhanced. Also, there's a chance Mono Black Devotion gets better in Pioneer, depending on what we get from the new set. It sees Legacy, even Vintage play, but maybe this was some overdue retraction. Number four is Is It Charm from the Guilds of Ravnica Is It Guild Kit. It goes down 68 cents to 333. This is the harder to find copy of this card, and that's why it has gone up a lot recently, especially when the Pioneer format was announced, and then later this card was doing well in the Phoenix decks. It did grow a lot, so it isn't too surprising to see some retraction here. But it is worth noting, too, that the Is It Phoenix deck did well in the format this week, so some people might be shying away from it in fear that a banning could be coming. Number three, Nissa Voice of Zendikar goes down 70 cents to 1235. This is from Oath of the Gatewatch. This card was hot recently in Pioneer. She's playing hard and scale, sometimes in Mono Green Devotion, but those cards are not getting as much play as they were getting before some of the bannings occurred. So because of that, this card does soften up. Another reason it is soft is it did get reprinted in Mystery Boosters as well. Number two is Gideon Ally of Zendikar. It goes down $1.32 to 1651. Now, this card spiked pretty aggressively recently because the Pioneer format came around, and it has been seeing play in a number of different builds there. Spirit builds, Boros Knights, Mono White Weenie. Beyond that, this card also got a little hotter in Commander because of Sir Gwyn Hero of Ashvale from the Brawl deck. A lot of people wanted to grab that card and build Knights decks around it, so you had a little cross interest here. This is also still a great legacy card, so he's playing a lot of sideboards. But with the recent inflation, this is going back down a little bit this week. Number one is kind of a weird one. It's Land of War Elves, but it's the one from the Battle Royale box set. It goes down $1.75 to 151 Recently it spikes, so now it's just normalizing. I threw it on here because technically, yes, it is Pioneer Legal. It does see a lot of Pioneer play. Also, good popper and legacy card for Elves builds. And if you're keeping track, this also did get a Mystery Booster reprint recently. 
On to the top seven Pioneer legal cards that have gained value this week. Number seven, Ugin the Spirit Dragon, up $1.30 to $56.87. Cards looking pretty good in Pioneer. Who would have thunk it? Mono Green Ramp decks will play this. Lotus Storm Sideboards will run this. Lotus Storm's been pretty popular recently, too. And other decks in the format as well. Modern, you know, it's a big Tron card, Legacy and Post builds, and it's a great Commander card, too. Number six, this is one to watch. Thassa got of the Sea. It goes up $1.40 to $21.50. So this card saw a little bit of a spike recently because of Pioneer and more specifically the Mono Blue Devotion deck, but then the deck didn't really do well at first and it started to go back down again. However, it has been performing better recently and of course with Theros coming, maybe there'll be some new tools for that deck. Additionally, this is a good commander card with Yuriko the Tiger Shadow and Yuriko is reprinted in Mystery Boosters, which could be pushing some commander players in this direction too. Number five is Sliver Hive Lord from Magic 2015. It goes up $1.69 to $31.74. So this did get reprinted in Mystery Boosters, but it's still going up in value. Why is that? Because slivers are very hot yet again for commander purposes. And that is because of Kaleidoscope Killers. In there, you can find a reprint of Sliver Overlord. And that just gets more copies out there in people's hands. It makes the card a little cheaper. And it gets people thinking, okay, I got this card. Now maybe I want to pick up some more slivers. And that's what you're seeing here. Number four is one of those Apocalypse Painlands. It's Yavimaya Coast again, going up 260 to 1465. So some of these are just getting hot because there's less copies of them in good condition on the secondary market, which means many times they just dry up or they could be the target of a buyout. Maybe that's what happened here. But this card does see play in Lotus Storm builds, which are popular right now in Pioneer and other decks too. It also sees some modern play. Number three is Pithing Needle from 10th edition. This card is just trying to stabilize and find its price point every week. It goes up, then down, and then up, and then down. It's going up 328 this week to 899. Clearly, this is a great sideboard card for Modern and Legacy, and now it can be used in Pioneer too. Number two, Nickel Bolas the Ravager goes up 639 this week to 2899. A couple things going on here. First off, it is seeing more Pioneer play in Grixis control decks, which are doing better now. Secondly, though, again, it's Kaleidoscope Killers driving this a little bit. In there, you got a reprinting of the Ur Dragon, and those cards tend to play together a lot in Commander. Number one, the Scarab God goes up 1341 to 33.95. Wow. Okay, so this has been kind of hot, at least a little bit in Pioneer, because it has seen some play in Grixis Control or Demir Control. But this past week, there was a streamer named Aspiring Spike that put together a really cool Pioneer deck with this and Wilderness Reclamation, and it has been tearing it up on Magic Online. A lot of five O's. So. A lot of people are trying to build this deck, try it out, and because of that, the Scarab God spikes quite a bit this week. Also worth noting that this could get better with Theros as well, because Theros is probably going to bring us a fair amount of zombies, considering the theme of the Underworld. And we saw a reprint this week of one notable zombie, Grey Merchant of Asphodel. Beyond that, the ability on this card could hose escape a little bit too. And it's a pretty popular commander card, but the real driver this week was that new brew. Out to the top five modern legal cards that have lost value this week. And modern does continue to be soft. We talked about it in previous videos. Part of it is because a lot of folks are focused on Pioneer right now. Secondly, the mystery boosters, when they come to stores this spring, are going to have an additional 121 foil reprints that are not already in that set. We don't know what those are, but there's a good chance many of them could be some big modern cards. And also, you got to wonder, is the insider information starting to leak out about what those cards could be? Maybe that's playing a role too. Who knows? So let's look at the cards losing value first. Number five is Mox Opal from Scars of Mirrodin. Goes down more this week, $1.69 to $94.50. Very popular modern card. Saltai Artifacts is a very good deck right now. Of course, that deck plays this, as well as a whole lot of others. Sees Legacy play. It's a huge commander card, but it is still soft right now. Number four, Tarmogoyf, the original from Future Sight, down $1.76 to $75.01. Wow, another big staple of the modern format going down in value. You'll find this in four color Death Shadow, Johns, and other decks there. Legacy and Vintage players are interested in this too. Number three is Stoneforge Mystic continuing the descent down $1.95 to $40.93. And I say it every week when this got unbanned in modern, we saw some very aggressive spiking with this card. It's been retracting ever since. And yes, it's a good modern card, but it's not a super dominant one. As a matter of fact, this does see play in Bant Stoneblade, Azorius Control, Eldrazi and Taxes. And it can do well, but it didn't take over the format like a lot of people thought. Still sees Legacy play too in a number of decks. Number two is Sword of Fire and Ice from Darksteel. It goes down 298 to 7749. A couple things going on here. First off, this card spiked aggressively when Stoneforge Mystic was unbanned. 
A lot of people thought it would see more modern play than it is seeing. It is seeing some play, but like I said, Stoneforge isn't seeing as much play as many thought. And secondly, just because Stoneforge is in a deck doesn't mean this is there. It does feel like you're seeing more copies of Sword and Feast and Famine as opposed to this in those decks. Now it does continue to see Legacy play, and it's also a big commander card. Number one, these original copies taking a big hit this week. This is Dark Confidant from Ravnica City of Guilds. It goes down 336 to 5167. Now this card has been trending down because Run and Six is in the modern format now. So some of the decks like Jun, for example, if it's going to play Run and Six, it's got to cut something. Many times Bob got cut down, but Bob still sees play. Jun, The Rock, other decks there. Legacy, Golgari Depths, Four Color Loam, and more. But even so, still losing a fair amount of value. Okay, let's move on to the top five modern legal cards that have gained value this week. And really the big driver here is Commander. The modern format isn't driving prices all that much right now. Number five, Crater Hoof Behemoth from Modern Masters 2017. This goes up $1.50 to $36.99. This does see play in Legacy Elves builds, but the real reason this is increasing is Commander. Reese the Redeemed got reprinted in Mystery Boosters, and those cards play really well together in the Commander format. Number four is Idyllic Tutor, up $1.78 to $33.42. Tutors are always great in Commander, but with Theros coming, there's going to be more of a focus on enchantments very soon, so a lot of people are trying to pick up this card now. Number three, Sword of Fire and Ice from Modern Masters this time goes up 205 to 8846. So the other one's going down, this one's going up. And yes, like we said earlier, this does see modern play, but I think for the most part, commander players are driving the price up on this one. Number two, Morophon the Boundless, up 252 to 899. Again, another card being pushed because of commander, in particular, Kaleidoscope Killers. Sliver Overlord, the Ur Dragon, Reaper King. Those are the three cards in that product. Guess what? Morophon likes to play with all of them. Aside from that, a little over a week ago, they showed us a group of Theros Beyond Death preview cards that were only going to be found in theme boosters and collector boosters. But a couple of them do play well with Morophon. These are the two cards in particular, Serpent of Yawning Depths and Death Bellow Warcry. Number one is Send Triplets. Huge commander card here going up 1407 to 5261 this week. So we know this is a great commander card. Why is it going up so much right now? Because it's had a lot of attention on it recently. Not only has it been getting mentioned a lot on Command Zone podcast recently, but spoiler alert if you haven't watched the Game Nights episode from a few weeks ago yet, this was the winning commander in that episode and it just brought a lot of eyes to the card. Onto the Vintage Spotlight, this is where we talk about cards that see play in Legacy, Vintage, 93, 94, or cards that are just popular among collectors. You're going to notice that the Vintage market is starting to come to life again this week. It has been very slow. A lot of cards were losing value. A lot of rebounding going on this week, especially in the Unlimited set, which you'll see in a moment. We'll start with Aluren. This is on the reserve list. It goes up $1.70 to $31.49. You'll find this in Legacy Aluren decks, and it has seen increased commander play with Shalane Teller of Tales recently. You're going to see a few revised dual lands today, especially the cheaper ones are starting to heat up a little bit, beginning with Taiga. This, of course, is on the reserve list. It goes up $1.87 to $147.83. Vampiric Tutor, two copies here. Visions up $1.23 to $61.45. Eternal Masters up $1.94 to $69.42. This is a great vintage card, great commander card. Has been seeing increased play because of Carrick, Son of Yawgmoth decks, but generally just tutors are going to be awesome anyway. Also, recently, the professor on Tolarian Community College talked about this card in a couple different videos. One was the Tesa Karlov deck list, and the other video talked about great commander cards in black. So with those videos getting a lot of views, not too surprising to see this go up. Next we have Savannah from Revise, so another Revise dual land here. It goes up 202 to 145.51 on the reserve list. Intuition on the reserve list, but this did get a reprinting as a judge promo and foil before they closed that loophole on the reserve list. It goes up 289 to 49.49. In Legacy, you'll find this in Sneak and Show, Omnitel Builds, and this is also a very solid commander card. Lion's Eye Diamond's back again on the reserve list. It goes up 297 to 20469. Great legacy and vintage card. Also has seen increased commander play recently with Emery Lurker of the Lock Around. Mana Drain from Iconic Masters. Great vintage and commander card goes up 299 to 8797. Mana Crypt from Eternal Masters goes up 719 to 199.48. Another great vintage and commander card. This actually just got reprinted in Mystery Boosters, and because of that, it was going down in value for a while, but it is quickly rebounding. Badlands, another revised dual lands on the reserve list. It goes up 757 to 220.09. 
Now you're going to start seeing some of these unlimited cards rebounding back. Mahamoti Jin going up 1073 to 109.99. Many of them happen to be good 93, 94 cards as well. Savannah Lions is a good example of that from Unlimited. It goes up 1184 to 9637. Royal Assassin from Unlimited up 1445 to 7999. Mana Vault from Unlimited going up 1719 to 12561. Wrath of God from Unlimited up 1743 to 6878. Word of Command from Unlimited, this one's on the reserve list. It goes up 1880 to 164.99. Righteousness from Unlimited up 1961 to 34.99. Mishra's Factory, this is the winter variant from Antiquities. It goes up 28.25 to 279.29. This one always seems to go up during the holiday season. I'm sure it's people trying to build themed commander decks around snow and the holidays. So this year, there it is again. Eureka on the reserve list goes up 37.79 to 386.94. Underground C from Unlimited this time on the reserve list, but it did get reprinted and revised. It goes up $164.60 to $1,390.75. So this card is a little inflated this week due to exaggerated listings. When it comes to these hard-to-find cards that are very expensive, you don't find a lot of sales online in any given week. Because of that, the big websites and such, they have to kind of default back to what people are trying to sell them for. Sometimes you get some weird data in there. If you really wanted to get a lightly played copy of this card, you should expect to pay $800 to $850 for it. Library of Alexandria, also on the reserve list, up $195.98 to $1,495. Same story here, there are some exaggerated listings. If you were really serious about getting a lightly played copy of this, you should expect to pay around $1,100. Okay, let's move on to the Commander Spotlight. And, much like the Vintage section, a lot more life this time in the Commander Spotlight, even though we have been talking about a lot of Commander cards already in this video. Azusa Lost But Seeking, this is the one from Champions of Kamigawa. It goes up a dollar to $34.09. Very solid Commander card, but also very good in Modern and Amulet Titan, which is popular right now. Urza Lord High Artificer up a dollar or two to $32.89. Now, maybe this is moving more because of Modern right now. Saltai Artifacts, other Urza builds in Modern have been very good. This also sees some legacy play, but it is a big commander card too. Sword of Feast and Famine, this is the one from the modern event deck, so a little harder to find. It goes up $1.02 to fifty nine eighty seven, and again, maybe moving because of modern and the play it sees with Stoneforge Mystic, but this is a very solid commander card too. Dragon Broodmother, up $1.05 to seventeen ninety eight. This one's interesting. It did get a reprint in Mystery Boosters, but it's still going up. And a lot of it has to do with Kaleidoscope Killers again and the Ur-Dragon reprint there. Also, this has seen some increased commander play recently with cards like Corvold, Fakers King, and some of the other newer cards out there. Damnation from Planar Chaos. It goes up $1.31 to $31.49. This sees a tad bit of modern play nowadays, but for the most part, this is just a huge commander card going up. Windfall. This is the copy from Battle Royale. It goes up $1.45 to $8.78. So again, you have a harder to find version of the card that probably just dried up this week. That's why it's going up. But it is a big commander card, so I thought I'd include it here. Training Grounds. This card's been hot up $1.45 to $26.14. We know this is a great sliver card. And of course, with the Sliver Overlord being reprinted recently in Kaleidoscope Killers, there's more attention on this card. Also, this is very good with Kenrith the Return King. And this got a Command Zone podcast mention this week. Mana Reflection up $1.47 to $31.45. Great commander card that is yet to be reprinted, and I haven't had a chance to say it in a while, so here we go. As you know, cards from this time period of Magic had lower print runs, less sales were going on. Because of that, finding some of these cards in good condition can be a challenge, and prices can get high. Volrath Stronghold. This one is on the reserve list. It goes up $1.71 to $44.75. Now this sees a tad bit of legacy play, but it's really commander driving this. This was on the video that the professor from Tolarian Community College did about strong commander cards in black. But there's something else driving it this week. I mentioned the reprint of Grey Merchant of Asphodel. Well, this card plays really well with that one in commander, and they combo with Gate to Phyrexia. More on that in a moment. Power Artifact, this one's on the reserve list, up $1.86 to $132.22. Fantastic commander card and has seen more play recently with Urza and Emery. Temporal Manipulation from Portal Second Age goes up $2 to $36. Great commander card, and this original copy is getting hard to find in good condition. Force of Will, very good vintage, legacy, and commander card. This is the one from Eternal Masters. It goes up $306 this week to $112.20. And the foreshadowing pays off. Gate to Phyrexia, which is on the reserve list. It goes up $331 to $37.99 for the reasons I mentioned a moment ago. 
Sliver Queen gets a bump because of that reprinting of Sliver Overlord and Kaleidoscope Killers. It goes up 442 to 11490. This is on the reserve list and no doubt will continue to go up in value over time. Selvage from Portal Second Age goes up 490 to 749. This is drying up pretty quick because it's never been reprinted and it is getting hard, like I said, to find Portal Second Age cards in good condition. This also has seen increased play in Commander with Golos Tireless Pilgrim. I didn't really have any popper cards to talk about this week, so we're going to move to the premium spotlight. This is where we talk about cards that are a little bit harder to find, some of those foils or promo cards. I don't like to go too deep, though, with those type of cards, because like I was mentioning with the vintage cards, many times you can get some bad data if there's not a lot of sales going on. But I like to find one card that at least feels like it's moving naturally with the market. This week I went with the Scarab God foil copies. Amaket Invocations going up 297 to 10575 the pre-release promo of 1576 to 4995 and the regular foil from Hour of Devastation is going up 1846 this week to $54. All right, that wraps up the Market Watch. And this week, of course, we're going to be getting a lot of Theros Beyond Death previews. So I anticipate next Saturday, we're going to see some price influence from those previews. But until then, hey, thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe and have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching. This video is made possible through the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Check out the description below for links to our Patreon page as well as our Amazon affiliate store where a small percentage of all sales will also help support the channel. Finally, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the new videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon and have a great day.